Welcome to the Amateur Machine Shop. In this video I machine the crankshaft support parts. These parts are made from brass and locate the two ball bearings which as the name suggests locate the crankshaft. Last year I created the model of the mini flame eater parts in Fusion 360. Here you can see the two supports in place. The crankshaft supports are rather simple. A pocket for a bearing and two tap holes on the bottom. Everything else is for aesthetics. Squaring the vise. I had removed my vise from the mill to improve the clamping accuracy. Check out the video on the vise phase 2 fix. Having one side of the vise fastened tight, I used a hammer to tap the vise until parallel and tightened the clamp. This can take a while of traveling the vise back and forth until the vise is parallel. And finally, the vise is square. When I bought my lathe and mill, two pieces of quarter inch sheet brass were in the drawer. To ensure the brass would polish to a bright finish, I used a scotch brite pad to perform a test. A crisscross pattern revealed the brass could be used for these parts. Next, I printed a drawing to reference the part along with two one to one ratio prints of the part. Using Elmer's spray adhesive, I glued the print to the brass. As you will see later in the video, the adhesive didn't work. Here's an idea of scale of the crankshaft support parts beside a Bic lighter. Let's start milling the parts. First a reference corner was required. I have sped up much of the machining to reduce the length of the video and reduce the boring redundancy. After the reference faces were milled, an edge finder is used to zero the table axes. I had wanted to use a scroll saw to cut out the parts, however it took way too long and had little control, either using the wrong blade or not enough experience or both. Ended up cutting the parts on my bandsaw. At this point I once again edge find both corners and travel to the predetermined locations. In this instance the large radii are being milled. I didn't have a 20mm diameter end mill so I used a 3 quarter insertable carbide end mill. 
I proceeded to mill the red eye on both sides in plunging steps, feeding along the X axis. Sorry, I didn't realize the camera went out of focus during the plunging, but the process can still be seen. Next up, the side areas are being brought to size. Brass is relatively soft and tends to mill rather easily. Sometimes it's easier using the end mill to pick up of an edge and divide by half to find the center rather than using an edge finder. Since the corners are purely decorative, accuracy isn't critical. The parts are barely held in the vise. I am using a parallel underneath to keep the parts from being pushed down. On the last pass, the end mill is fed slowly to get a smoother finish. Off camera, I did mill the other side once more due to the parts moving. The thickness of the crankshaft supports is 6mm. I took material from both sides to ensure the parts are flat. Next up, milling the holes. The bottom and middle holes are decorative. Only the top hole is critical. The final size of the holes is 8mm. A 5 16 end mill is very close to that size. The hole diameter isn't critical for these two holes. Back in December 2011, when visiting my wife's family in South America, one of my brother-in-laws gifted me a metric drill set. Nothing of high quality, but it has been a very handy set of tools. The reason the drill slipped in the first part is due to using a fractional collet to hold a metric drill. Not always the best thing to do. I chose to chamfer all the holes by hand to keep from going too deep. Later I will spend more time on the chamfers. At this point, the two mounting holes need to be drilled and tapped, using a wide sharpie marker and a caliper to lay out the lines for referencing the hole locations. Moving between the R8 collets and the drill chuck requires the raising of the milling head. The hole sizes are drilled for a 3mm tap. I may decide to go to imperial size later, depending on the fasteners. One of the last procedures is to create the bore for locating the bearings. These bearings are tiny. For this I thought I would try the four jaw chuck which barely had enough clamping to hold the support. Here we are one year later. I created a small spacer to bring the part closer to the outside edge of the jaws. With the part clamped in the chuck, an indicator is used to center the milled hole. Once centered, the bore for the bearing can be laid. A small self-made boring bar is used. Simple, but effective. The depth is only 3 millimeters. Using a dial indicator to ensure I bore to the correct depth, any light passes are made, stopping to measure often as there is little forgiveness with small diameters. 
Normally on a small diameter, the RPM would be high, but due to the part being off-center, an RPM around 750 was used. Any higher caused vibration. A few light cuts made with no adjustment, the bearing was fitted until it just started to slide in on its own. That concludes the machining of the crankshaft parts. The polishing of the brass will be covered in another video. Thanks for watching.